friends. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Fort Worth Roots. This is a podcast for Fort Worthians who love our city and want stories from our community's creators. Do you love Fort Worth? You want to know what's happening in your backyard? Then this podcast was made for you. You can find us on all the podcast streaming services. If ever you cannot find us on a uh, streaming service that you like to listen to podcasts on, just let me know. You can email me at media at fortworthroots.com and we'll get it added to that directory as quickly as possible. Our guest today's information can be found at artoftristastudios.com and thematthewshow.com. And you can see a full lineup of uh, the Matthew Show's uh venues that he's going to be playing at um you'll if you don't already know this the matthew show they play at venues all over the place here from weatherford to fort worth and all, all the little areas around our community so uh, he's out there playing just like most of our guests that come on the show uh at venues all over the place so quickest way to find him is to go to the and see where he's playing next the most interesting place that he's playing, in my opinion, and we get into this in the show, but he is playing at a venue called the Dirty Grind, which is a digital space inside of a game called Second Life, which is online. I don't think you have to pay anything to get into this. And you can go, you can take your little avatar to the Dirty Grind, which is a a, a place inside this game, and you can listen to the Matthew Show play live on Sunday, February 13th at 4 p.m. If you forget all that, I'll have it in the show notes, but you can also find it on his website, thematthewshow.com. Ladies and gentlemen, thank y'all so much for being here and being a part of the show, listening to Fort Worth Roots. Every time you download one episode, it helps the show grow. So thank you for that. Let's give it up for our guests today, Trista Morris and Matthew Broyles. And let's start the show. Okay, so formal apology. Thank y'all so much for working with the timetable. Yeah. I oh could, no, you're fine. I like, actually I, I helped us. Finished like, at it like helped 6:30, us. Because so. yeah, I had uh, I had to go help her tear down the scaffolding, and we had to get rid of the old scaffolding, and it was good. So it took longer. Oh my than we thought anyway. Is that like a city requirement? Like no scaffolding can well, be left up no, overnight. The ma- no, so people th- will steal it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot. They're actually kind of expensive, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. And, oh, yeah. the, and the guy that brought the crappy scaffolding is going to come pick up his crappy scaffolding so we can use the new scaffolding that we got that doesn't crap. These were provided by the city? No, well, this, this oh, no. was actually, <laughs> this was an interesting little bit. Um, somebody named, thank you. I was there like, you I go. I'm so that. sorry. Yeah, I don't, I've know, done what, that. I don't know what his I've actual name is, but on the internet, he's Paw Paw Ross. Paw Paw Ross. Yeah. I think he just goes by Paw Paw. I'm sorry, I missed that. Who's this? Old Paw Paw. He's the owner, uh, I guess he's the owner of the uh, Red Dog Saloon. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. If you've never been to the Red Dog Saloon, it's over on the east side. And um, so Paw Paw Ross is who he is on the internet. I don't actually yeah. know his I can name. see the logo. I just can't even remember. Yeah. Is, Re- it, what, is it just a venue or? It's just a bar. It's yeah. a bar. It's, it's a but little they bar. have they have a nice little stage. And uh, anyway, he saw the plight of the of the scaffolding. And he was like, I have a really nice scaffolding. You know, I'll go ahead and bring <laughs> it over. So he, It was kind of funny. He shows up, he drops it off, and he's like, well, uh, actually, I was going to ask <laughs> if, uh, if you could, you know paint my logo on a bar top and, oh. and then maybe paint it on the side of my building i was like well fuck yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, that's awesome that's never a no sir. So there might have been an ulterior motive but i'm not mad about it so no, right no. right yeah so okay. I, hey it he, helps he cared about me not dying what the so hell was he doing cool. with scaffolding anyway is that just oh, something he had laying around who knows <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he uses it for something i don't i don't know what he does actually but um, yeah it runs about, a bar apart from that maybe. runs a bar or something about air conditioning it might not even be his scaffolding it might be you know he might have might have went and rented it for you just to get in right oh, man people well, do crazy he's, stuff he's, he's got it in thanks papa appreciate it. <laughs> shout out to you y'all go go hang out at the red dog red dog okay and it, you said it's on the east side it is yeah so um i'm trying to remember the cross street but it's over past i think it's past beach okay. uh, on lancaster and uh it's it's a it's a cool little place it's funny because you don't expect it mm-hmm. like you go um somebody had asked me to go out there and and it's just it looks like just a little you know regular dive bar but you go yeah. in and like people are really like into the music and they i think they 
they used to run a little uh, like Sunday night broadcast, where, like internet broadcast, where they would have a guy, Josh Benson, who would host it, and he would. They had these little running gags, where like if you set, if you're the songwriter and you're up there and you say, "I wrote this song," they go, "He wrote this song," and everybody takes a drink, you know. <laughs> and and uh, it's just this kind of fun. It's a it's a great little place, uh, but it's tucked away where you would never stumble on it. Yeah, you need to know it's there. <laughs> you have to know it's yeah. there. And they got a guy, Chuck, who just kind of sometimes he just hangs around the in the back of the bar with a saxophone and just kind of chimes in every now and then. You got to have a chuck, right? <laughs> Everybody needs a chuck. Everybody needs a chuck. And they actually have a red dog, uh, this this uh, big, so old, big old pit so bull. Okay, and he's dad. very friendly. I got to see lots of pictures of him today. It's yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> so so you were over there today? Yeah. No, he oh, delivered. Okay. He, he oh, okay. delivered it. I was like, oh, brought, well, brought holy the pictures shit, with Paw Paw, damn, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, it was cool. It was really cool because, yeah, like I said, the old, the scaffolding that she was given... Um, it was like cracking. I, so yeah, you don't want, you don't they're want like stuff. it's missing the safety pin, so right. it could it's just missing, do yeah. that if it wanted to. <laughs> um, it's got like one pin at the top, and then I, I get up on it, and like the thing is wobbling. And Trista, then, we will reach out to the <laughs> Fort Worth Roots community slash Fort Worth musicians, <laughs> and we will find you some safety. But you know what? Oh, so was, we don't want you up on. So I the <laughs> scaffold. I think honestly, this is a, a, the fact that this worked out is an endorsement of this community the mm-hmm. fact that because yeah. both, both of us know you know half the damn town so like when as soon as i said you know hey does anyone know anything about scaffolding suddenly there's all of these people going hey i know about scaffolding and, yeah and it was like it got resolved <laughs> within a day or two that is so, so awesome and, and like I, at first i was gonna be like no i'm gonna i'm gonna wait and see what you know what the owner yeah. of the building gives me let me see and like he had he contacted his maintenance guy and he was just like hey you got anything and the maintenance <laughs> and guy was like oh yeah no i got something yeah. and we're not and we're not throwing chris under no, the bus no here no no chris uh, is awesome he thought chris he was getting good scaffolding he did not know he was getting bad scaffolding so, so he was standing in his coffee shop with his hand over his head just going oh my god and i was like it's okay all right you know we'll just make well, it work for anybody in <laughs> construction or anybody that's got their own business that requires scaffolding mm. you see people working with what they have yeah, yeah. and oh, yeah. you know to him that's fine he knows that you know he's used yeah. that scaffolding sure. for so long it's always worked for him why not right yeah. but he knows you- he knows where the weak spots are and what not to <laughs> yeah, do and i'm over here i stand on it goes crack i'm like okay no, i'm gonna get off of this <laughs> well and that's i get that because like i'm kind of like that with my guitar like you know it's got a wonky jack and i know how to rig the the cable so that it doesn't go out and like but you know i would have to tell somebody that you know if i was yeah. to let them borrow it so yeah. i you know I, I kind of understand working with what you got trying to get the tv to work so that i could right. pull up your last episode i think it was episode eight or seven it was somewhere towards the beginning it was the yeah. first 10 mm-hmm. that, that you guys were out and thank yeah. you for that y'all, oh, yeah. y'all got the show the rolling when i had not had coffee and i was over <laughs> here just kind of like clinging to life with yeah. a water bottle yeah, yeah. so well, any yeah. question was just kind of like okay i guess i'll answer well it was a rough day for both of us because i didn't know what the hell i was doing <laughs> you were having podcasting. Fun, though. man i was just excited matters. that anybody would give me the time of day back then so thank y'all for, uh, yeah, for being you, part of the ogs oh, the the original 10 no i'm like so i was it. trying to remember when was that 2020 or was that, that yeah that was uh no 20, was that 2021 that was 2021 was it really? wait hold on no 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 that You're was right. like toward the end of You're 2020, right. 2020 it was 2020 like, yeah yeah because you yeah okay because you were out of town for a while the last two years have been a blur yeah right i think for everybody but man i've i've been busy i've had a lot yeah. of stuff going on well i, I moved down to austin for nine months right that's what yeah. i was remembering was that, yeah. yeah you were gone for we most were like, of the last year is it is it Didn't the go same well. place <laughs> right is he still in? yeah well. yeah <laughs> so austin i i think is a wonderful wonderful place it is to visit it's a great place and then i came running back with my tail tucked between my legs to fort worth well these where, days where I belong well and it's and she can t- <laughs> so she she grew up partially near austin and uh it was uh, Georgetown, Texas, is where yeah. I grew yeah. up, basically. But in you That's know, in just, my teen just kind of north of Austin, yeah. right? right? It's where yeah. all the old hippies and yeah. like right wing people go to go like hang out. And okay, like, yeah. and it's die. an interesting mix. It's and really weird. Like, yeah, the Goodwill there is really weird. Um, if you ever if in you ever way? go in any of the little thrift shops, it's like 
<laughs> hyper conservative thing flower hippie frog you know it's like what <laughs> i kind of i kind of love that i know because it doesn't exist anymore like it's kind of fun that. right but when that's because of course they have a, this huge retirement community uh, in georgetown uh, sun city and then they also like have texas florida yeah, yeah right but then they also have a college uh right there southwest yeah. university with a museum and then of course you also have austin right there mm-hmm. so it's this, this kind of uh, interesting mm-hmm. but we were we went down to Austin when was it last year uh, and yeah. so she like has these teenage memories of going down to 6th street with just it was right? just everything's blowing up it was up. like a oh, Tuesday yeah. night and you couldn't even drive down the street Dude, it was there were so amazing many but yeah. like we yeah. went down there last year it's it was yeah. oh my nothing. god it was, run down it, shitty yeah. nothing it yeah it was nothing and it, and, it, and it, it crazy? truly encapsulates <clears throat> the uh, concept of dirty sixth street now because it's pretty yeah. it's if, not what it was no, and i, I remember that too i remember yeah. not I, <laughs> it doesn't feel like that long ago <laughs> no it, well, it wasn't maybe 10 years maybe yeah well uh, a little Shit, longer for me but, but what am i <laughs> god damn yeah 10 years but you yeah, yeah, have those moments changed. where you're like Oh yeah, I'm not. <laughs> but think I'm not about that age anymore. I, I? Well, yeah, I know. <laughs> well, hell, it happens. But and then you look back on it. I don't know if you feel the same way, but I feel like I've lived maybe four different lives just See, in, just in my thirty six years. Why, this is why Doctor Who makes a lot of sense to me because you live one <laughs> life and then you regenerate into a new one. Yeah, and because I've yeah, I'm like I'm at least on my sixth or seventh at this point because oh, yeah. You, so Joan Didion uh, recently, uh, she died, and, and one of the things she said was, I've lost touch with many of the people I used to be. And I always think there's a lot of truth to that because you like you remember the things you did but you're not you don't remember all of your processes that you mm-hmm. had when you did the thing and that's maybe a stuff that you wouldn't do now right uh because you did it already and you went eh, you know and you changed <laughs> eh, you yeah. changed your processes uh <laughs> and uh or was something you decided not to do then but now you're going to do it now because you've had different processes right because we cycle out our cells every like seven years or something so like we're not now, even the same people now here's, right here's a curious All of it, question right? for you matt do you keep journals from like old ones, old uh, ones? I, I don't yeah my journal now is twitter but uh <laughs> but like uh, yeah no i have i have old journals i have one from when i was in first grade I was once a member of the Planetary Society, which is uh, Carl Sagan's you know, group that he started. And I didn't know that. Back when they were trying to cr- to launch the solar sail, right? They were going to do this solar sail project, which just failed miserably. It was it disillusioned me enough that I'd stopped uh, giving them money. <laughs> but uh, oh. they tried to launch it on this crappy Russian rocket. And predictably, the damn thing falls into the sea, you know? <laughs> no. and so, but anyway, so I was like, okay if we can get this telescope so i was really excited about the telescope and thank goodness it made it up there they deployed all this stuff so now in a couple of months we're actually going to start seeing things from it and i'm you remember i don't know if you remember when they started releasing those hubble uh images at first you know like the deep field you know it just kind of my mind just went <sighs> yeah you know? i mean I've, I've seen documentaries on it yeah. and stuff i don't think well first of all uh, our exploration into the stars doesn't get any media attention at all no, and and I, don't, I don't think it did back then with hubble either but i'm, I'm obsessed with it so i've seen yeah, all right. the developmental stuff along the way mm-hmm. before we go a step further though Sorry. i do have to point out that russia has made some really great rockets that have got they have they have our astronauts to the space station but I, yeah but i think <laughs> this one they got discount i think this was the one the, the, one the planetary society got a hold of i think it was from some used car salesman yeah. named vlad yeah. or something yeah. Yeah. Vlad. it had named to be vlad, vlad. had to be vlad vlad, vlad yeah. selling you a faulty BMW vlad's used it. apollo quality <laughs> rockets yeah so it's I, military grade <laughs> But yeah. really, he just took apart like eight cars and stuck them together yeah. with super glue. It was yeah. probably, yeah, maybe it was the same guy who built that one who was trying to prove the earth was flat, you know, oh, like where he dude. launched himself from. I watched that documentary. <laughs> that was terrible. Spoiler <laughs> alert, folks. That man died. Yeah. Oh, my right. God. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, he built his, well, he, him he and his own friends rocket. built some rockets, mm-hmm. and everybody was very standoffish <laughs> about it. Like, he didn't get much media attention because right. everybody was very concerned about it's him. Like, yes. Well, we, as they, they did be. not want to be. 
part of it. When your friends are pretty sure that this is going to go bad, you should probably (laughs) listen to them. I I feel like there's a social cue there. So bad. So bad. (laughs) So, you know. But uh, James Webb Telescope. So you've been following this. I didn't know about it until probably six months before the launch, but it's been a project for the past, what, 20 years? It's been, yeah, it's been a work for a long time. From him and my brother. I mean, I, I. I should probably no. It's cool that because because again, I still I still get the Planetary Society emails and whatnot, and so like I and I you know I watch the Star Talk and things yeah. like that. But they've been talking about it for a really long time, and that actually made me a little bit nervous because sometimes when you talk about something for I a know, long time and I then know. it doesn't happen, then you just like yeah. so I was kind of reluctant to hope. And then, of course, they get it up there, and they're like, well, there's 346 <laughs> uh, potential points of failure. Yeah. And it's like, oh, good. And uh, I'm like, okay, <laughs> great. Yeah. You know, and for some miracle, they all everything didn't worked. happen. Everything, everything So, for the listeners, the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, right? Mm-hmm. It, this thing, uh, a, a culmination of scientists' uh, endeavors over the past two decades, mm-hmm. building this monstrosity yeah it's huge packed tight into a rocket Mm -hmm. shot into outer space and then has to deploy kind of like a flower in all of its intricacies intricacies Mm -hmm. it has to unfold itself and all these little hinges and everything has to be Mm -hmm. absolutely perfect in the cold of space and 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 it's (laughs) not traveling like thousands of miles an hour (laughs) yeah no no no. yeah what tens of thousands yeah yeah really really fast yeah and uh well it went so well the launch went so well Mm -hmm. that they actually a project that was set to last i think only 10 years right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they thought they were only going to have about 10 years worth of usable fuel on this thing Mm -hmm. you can tell i'm nerding out (laughs) anyway the launch went so well they got an extra research all right no i've just been listening i love it i love it no research actually (laughs) just listening but they got an extra two to five years they're not quite sure but the launch went so well and they saved so much fuel that they're able to guarantee at least 12 years instead of 10 maybe 15 they don't know it might go even better than that well you know and you remember that the Hubble was only supposed to be online for I think it had like a one year mission you want to set Uh, that bar low right did it right (laughs) real low because just in case you got the bad engineer that day that that thing's still kicking and well it's uh, uh, you know Voyager is still sending uh, messages back damn really and that launched that launched uh, 60s right I think I was well it's around about when I was born, so probably, I think early seventies. Uh, but it's it's been up in space a long time, and it's just traveling at ridiculous speed yeah. out of the. Uh, it's it's it is outside the solar system now. So is uh, it? It's just taking. It's just going. It's just going because mm-hmm. there's nothing to stop it. Uh, once you're oh, it's out of fuel. Uh, well, right, but it's you know yeah, it ran out of fuel. But you know the thing with inertia, right, like, right, yeah. Once you're going to, a certain, there's speed, no resistance unless it hits something. It's just going to keep going, right? And uh, hadn't it, hit anything yet. No, no, <laughs> hadn't anything. And it's so now it has left uh, the the heliopause, which is where the uh, all the influence of the sun disappears, and wow. and so it is just now just going. And it's still taking pictures. And it's it's not taking pictures, but oh, it's, it's sending data. data. It's sending data. Yeah. So it'll send a little blurb there. So there's a like locational. It's a Twitter account that NASA runs that. Uh, sends that uh posts what it sends and so it'll say you know i am now x number of miles from the earth and you know this is the temperature and all this kind of stuff and it'll give you this little this little small little readout and uh, then it goes back to sleep and uh keeps going through space and then oh wow a month or so later it'll go now i am now this many miles from you know and jesus uh, <laughs> that's cool i had no idea yeah yeah and there's the two of them uh voyager one and voyager two hmm. and they're going opposite directions holy oh, wow. shit and then there's two more pioneer one and pioneer two that are going in two other directions that they're not going quite as fast they haven't left the solar system yet but voyager two i think was the first one to actually break through the heliopause and wow. it's uh it's now in interstellar space. It so, is. so they're not they're not being touched by the sun's radiation at this point. Not anymore. They're not getting they're any gone. heat. No heat. So they're at absolute zero, mm-hmm. cruising at seventeen thousand miles Lord an hour. Lord knows how fast. Yeah. yeah. Jesus, that's cool. And think about that. They only left the heliopause, I think, a few years ago. So mm. uh, that's been forty years or, or more 
that they've been traveling and only just now <laughs> getting out of the range of the sun's you influence. know but that so. uh, you know on the on the universal scale that's about from here to the mailbox exactly yeah it's nothing. <laughs> that's why that's why when we talk about interstellar travel you have to realize what a big undertaking that is because if it takes you 40 years to even get out of the solar system you know, if we're talking about even the close, what Proxima Centauri is the, is the closest star. Four point something year, light years away. You know, that's going to take generations. Yeah. Uh, you know, unless unless we make a breakthrough where we figure out how to uh, travel yeah. faster. Than yeah. That. If we come up with some kind of warp technology or something. Otherwise, we just got to take a nap. We just got to, yep. we, you know. That's why the yep. cryogenesis tubes come into play <laughs> in the sci-fi, all the sci-fi Absol- movies. Yeah. You got to sleep. I, re- I recently <laughs> re- re-watched Alien uh, the other night because the kiddo had never seen it. And, you know, uh, Alien never, like, I didn't it, know it she stands the Alien. test of time. Oh, wow. wow. And so it was like, but, but yeah, there. the cryo, you know, you got to go to sleep and, and uh, hope that the face hugger and then they're with you right you know what movie does not bode well with time mm. what's that event horizon and it pains oh, me to yeah, say it. yeah no because <laughs> i love that whenever i uh, yeah i was a kid i love that movie. it was it's a little bit fun in spots but yeah it's it's it goes a uh, it goes a certain way they tried too hard with the cgi they tried they went yeah, way yeah. overboard they jumped the shark hold that hand thank you so i went to the singer songwriter at playground yeah. and yeah. i and i don't even know this but joe savage is chiefly responsible for that he yes. put it together yes okay so i was waiting to talk to joe about that to get clarification but now you have clarified it yeah. yes um that's amazing that's awesome yeah that's great yeah. that a local musician has put together something like oh, yeah. that i've never and I'm a little embarrassed to say this. I've never been to something like that. Oh, oh. Every so you haven't d- been to Towns Fest or anything? None of it. Okay. No. Well, so, wait, okay, so I'm going to start sending you some invites because okay. there's stuff like that that happens. Now, mind you, in the past couple of years, this happened slightly less frequently. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there are considered. there are events like that. And actually, the Red Dog does something like that um, too. But, Dirty um, Water. It's so much Dirty fun. Dirty Water does that. Be- because what you get is musicians from all over the place yep. there were people there from san antonio oh yeah denton uh y'all might know more locations that these people mm-hmm. were pouring in from but all right here in fort worth dallas and playing some incredible right. stuff yeah i think i was two drinks in so mm-hmm. grant me that <laughs> but this one guy got on there and i've got his name somewhere i don't have it memorized mm-hmm. but i gave him a card and i told him i want him to come on the show he mm-hmm. was from either denton or san antonio i can't remember okay. which yeah. i want to say san antonio but he got up there and he sang a song that, I mean, everybody was playing their own music that yeah, night, right? right? Mm-hmm. So he gets about halfway into the song and I look at Morgan and I go, you know, he wrote this, right? Mm. And she's like, oh, because it was so emotional, but mm. it was so good. Yeah. And I actually teared up. <laughs> oh, wow. So that's, it was is, yeah. so sad, but it was so beautiful the way, I right. mean, he had, the, he had it nailed. It, yeah. I mean, every note perfect but that's beautiful people, absolutely beautiful people don't think this and this is why i've been trying to do for years is to try it through i had a podcast for a while the barbershop that where i would try to do kind of just to highlight people who i felt like didn't get enough attention and yeah. so now i'm doing this song swap thing at mass uh, a couple times a month of the fort songwriters uh, for the same reason which is because people in this town do not realize that they have amazing songwriters in this town mm-hmm. like they're here I, i've uh, taken know. people to some of the song swaps that he's done and they're like this is like lo- they're all local they right. all unbelievable live here? Yeah. yeah and even the yeah. ones who aren't local local let's say they're from san antonio they're from wherever yeah. they're people who are not people you know by name right oh yeah right. but they're phenomenal but if you were right. to hear them you would think wow why don't i know who this person is yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's partially because and this is the thing with texas is texas does breed a lot of songwriters um for whatever reason um probably because it's just freaking huge and so there's a lot of places for them to come from but part of it also is because you have centers like fort worth and 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 this is relatively recent that there's so many of them um because when i was getting started here in the in the 90s there were some good songwriters here but they weren't just all over the place yeah you generally had to go to austin for that um now there's a whole lot of them that are here and uh 
And what's cool about it is I, I notice this everybody is super, super supportive and super, super but that's the for difference. the people who are up on stage and playing. See, and, I, and I always hate to be this way, but um, part of the reason I don't play Dallas that much is I don't pick that vibe up as much right. there. No. Yeah. Now, there are s- some very good friends of mine live in Dallas and make music in Dallas and, and do support each other very well. But the scene at large, to me doesn't feel as well, supportive as it does here. I don't think Dallas has like a scene though. Oh, like, it does. No, it absolutely it does. does. Well, it actually has multiple scenes. It felt really scenes. broken up yeah. to me. It, it has multiple just, scenes. Yeah. You know, you, little, little pockets all over yeah. the place. It's yeah. not as tight knit as well. It's a, it's a bigger city for one thing. It's really, a bigger yeah. city, but it's also more, slightly more varied, um, you know, because you have the, like the more electronically minded folks and then you have the more rustic, you know, kind of. It's more techie. It tends yeah. to be much more yeah. technical. Uh, That's a good. However, idea. that said, you know some of the root, they, it's got rootsy artists too, but it it feels more splintered to me than Fort yeah. Worth does, and I think that's just that's a size issue. Like Fort Worth is it's probably it's got a lot to enough. do with the size, but yeah. you hit it on the head. I mean, it's also that it's uh, there's there's a lot of diversity. There's a lot yeah. going on in Dallas. Yeah, and there's a lot going on in Fort Worth too, yeah, but. You know, we're we're like one sixth scale. I we're, think yeah. uh, Dallas is. Well, they've I mean, got it, it dwarfs us. Two to three million people. I think we've got probably half a million now. Mm. Uh, so they're like you know three times our size. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also, it's not just Dallas proper because they also have all these oh, huge suburbs yeah. everywhere, yeah. of which we sometimes get considered a suburb. I don't consider us a suburb, but what's it, what, Fort what, Worth yeah, uh, of Dallas? People, people get out of here! Said it. I it's get really in the a, name wow. for our international airport. <laughs> That's why people Dallas don't, Fort yeah. Worth. We actually have more letters in <laughs> that <laughs> international airport than Dallas. However, <clears throat> the thing that's not DF. The thing that my Dallas <laughs> right. right. If it was DF, that would be a totally different. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing that that my Dallas in there we're all in trouble. <laughs> the thing that my <laughs> Dallas friends are quick to point out is that the cities feed off of each other. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So we are not this standalone thing. We're not like Lubbock, you know, where we're just out yeah. there and nothing else is there but the cows. It's like, you know, we Dallas and Fort Worth have fed off of each other for a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh and honestly, I think these days it's more like an I-35 corridor draw, like, you know, yeah, yeah. DFW feeds off of Austin, feeds off of San Antonio, feeds off of Houston. Well, lately, it's been feeding off of Austin a lot, I've noticed. Well, a, lot a, lot of, of, a lot of the 30, artists, musicians, people, they're all moving up here. Talk about 35 South towards Austin. <laughs> oh, I don't take 35. God, no. Uh, I go no. I go. There are other routes. Go, go yes. the back way. The pretty yeah. way is better. 281 is <laughs> the way to go. Spend the extra 30 the minutes and <laughs> spare your soul. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and so we've been doing these... Me and Joe have been doing these little tours. Uh, so you got the rustic over in Dallas, right? They have y'all do the three part circuit because yeah, they have two rustics now in Houston and one in San Antonio, and so they'll just book us on a little mini tour. That's so yeah. cool, and uh, it's 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 cool to so do that. Do they stop me if I'm getting too much into your business? But no, do they pay you to do the three? Oh, I, yeah, I guess yeah, yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we, nobody's we, doing that. For we free. ain't doing that for free. <laughs> yeah. No. No, no. So that's a good gig. Yeah, it's a really good. good gig. No, it is a good gig, and the it tends to be like a, like an hour and fifteen, or it's like an hour thirty minute set. Um, which Damn. Is yeah, because like that's like, intense. Like if I'm playing uh, woodshed, I'm going for like four hours, right? You know, yeah. and and for most of these like you know restaurant gigs, you usually go in at least three hours. But this is like an hour and a half, and you just get up and do your thing, and then you. Go. Okay, I was thinking that was a lot, but it's not. So, oh no 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 not for so there's different types of gigs so for instance if you're going down to lola's right for a three band bill Mm -hmm. most of those bands are going to have a 45 minute set you know be like 45 minutes to an hour because it's three bands and right and they're not going to start till 10 o'clock get you in get you out right (laughs) but if you were taking a restaurant gig uh you're probably going to go at least three hours um and uh so that's why for those and it's interesting because I know a lot of songwriters who, while they're very good songwriters, they don't have three hours worth of material. Um, so sometimes there are some of those gigs they can't do uh, Damn. For, for that reason. They just opt out. So they just well, come up they, with some new stuff. They, well, <laughs> he writes ultimately something every day. So I mean, wow. he doesn't come. Well, out. I don't know about well, that. No, not music, but like something. Yeah, he yeah. Write something. Uh, well, I've also <laughs> had the benefit of being in it for a long time, so it's cumulative. You ultimately, yeah. and you also learn other people's songs. One of the cool things that I like to do is to play other local people's songs. Nice. 
so I'll play like an Ed Rogers song or I'll play a Jeff Sims song or whatever and, and any so, Joe Savage in your repertoire uh, I don't because I play those songs all the time with Jeff. <laughs> so uh, however he and I cover some of the same songs nice uh, yeah but yeah he and it's funny because he has the same thing it's like he's been doing it long enough now to where three hours is not a, it's not a big deal um, and I I don't even remember a time when that was an issue, but he's new enough to the thing that he's just like, wow, I can, I can do three hours and it's not a big thing or four <laughs> hours or however long. And there's some of these younger folks, you know, like really good people like Aubrey Wallace or whatever, who, while they're really good, they may not be able to do those good. And, and, and even Levi, I think struggles with that. You know, it's like, um, and he's got like two EPs worth of stuff. Uh, which That's is why he gets his dad in there and he's like, Hey dad, well, cause wanna, Gerald knows, knows all <laughs> the songs. So, here? uh, but it's it's a once you can cross that threshold where you can fill a whole afternoon uh, at somewhere like uh, you know, Northside Remedy or whatever, uh, your gig possibilities open up pretty dramatically. Yeah, uh, and that that was something that I resisted for a long time because I was like, I don't want to be the guy in the corner playing the restaurant, you know. Until you figure out that actually sometimes those can be really fun because yeah. you. Uh, you can take a lot more liberties you know you can just be like well I want to try this and just see what happens you know see if they kick me out and then I'm going to kick them uh, you know so it's, it's kind of fun but then it's cool to then be on a three band bill and to just go ahead and let it rip for 45 minutes at, yeah. full, at full tilt uh, you know just every now and then because it's a it's a different type of vibe just to talking about yeah. showing off uh, no. we, we were we were at the uh, the uh, Good Will Duck. What, what was the name? Oh, of the that? Kindness Duck Party. The kindness, the kindness Duck, duck Party. Jesus, I Jesus. butchered that shit. <laughs> <laughs> the Good Will Duck is good close. Oh, you, you mean the Panic Party? <laughs> the panic <laughs> Party. That, that was a big. Miserable. That was a way bigger event than I thought it was. It was be. one day, right? Oh, it was a yeah. way bigger it, it, event just, than Maria it thought it was going to be. Yeah. Um, Maria Ariaga and Shay Dardis were the ones who were running that. And, um, Shay is the wife of Connor Dardis, who runs Thurston Company. Right, and they I do think a lot. Of, all of us. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, my comment was just there was a big duck there. It was <laughs> there a was huge a big duck. It was a big. I think we all just came big. to see the big damn duck. Well, it's pretty cool though. <laughs> I was like, that's a fucking duck. <laughs> Pardon me. I, you know, screw it. I'm just. Well, it was cuss. interesting. Because, yeah, <laughs> I'll that's let fine. You bleep it. You're we good. drove. <laughs> we drove by the night before uh, just to kind of scope it, and they had it lit up. And they had it lit yeah from the inside and so you're driving across the 7th street bridge and there's this enormous duck <laughs> so for our <laughs> listeners that, that were not aware of this yeah. uh, there was a giant how tall was this thing I think they said it was uh, 3 stories th- 4 stories at four, least 4 or 5 stories yeah. tall like as it was tall huge. as a you know one of the high-rise big rubber downtown. duck yeah. or it wasn't rubber it was whatever it went above the 7th street bridge it was bridge. shaped like a rubber duck it was inflatable right inflatable yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. and uh that Huge. was that You're was fine. the draw. That was the draw. <laughs> Come was. see the big damn duck. <laughs> but there were there had to be at least a hundred vendors there. Yeah, there were. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, way more than that. What? Oh yeah, one fifty, two hundred. Totally. But that that what's interesting is that that little show is little compared to what they do at the arts goggle and what happened right. before yeah. shutdown. Like that was crazy. Now the arts goggle is coming back, right? Yes. Now it that, is, that's the one over there. Home. Is it Magnolia? Magnolia. Yeah. And it takes up the whole street. Yeah. Oh my God. It used to only go so many blocks. Mm-hmm. Now it's like twice as far. It goes the whole goes way. Yeah, goes. it's massive. They, they just and opened the doors that uh, in 2019. In, in two rows, right? Two rows all the way yeah. down, front and all back. Down, I mean, it's, back. it's intense. Yeah. It's it is intense. It's very well, intense. ten by ten. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> well, and it, and they also they they have artists. Pl- they have music uh, music playing yeah. in multiple locations uh-huh. up, and, down, up and down the street. And uh, yeah, and I of course I played it back when I remember when it was just a field. <laughs> but it, no, it was it was Pepperidge Farm. Pepperidge Farm remembers. And then it was like yeah, they had it like you know it was a little tiny thing, and uh, but it's slowly just kind of taken over that whole dang street yeah um and i think it's cool but of course obviously they didn't do it in the last couple of years but 
and they normally do it in October, yeah. but they didn't do it this past October. No, they, they were too concerned because of how crowded it was in 2019. What, 2019? Yeah. God, I was there for Jesus that Christ. one. It was nuts. It was huge. I lost my father. I don't know where he went. <laughs> he just, he just <laughs> Did he ever come back? <laughs> Eventually. Like, toward the, like, you know, the give, very give or take end, about very six hours later, back. he showed back up with a beer in his hand and some food, and I was like, where the hell have you been? <laughs> I come bearing gifts. And a tree. He had a tree. They he were, did. He brought me a tree. I was <laughs> like, thank you, Dad. They're giving away those oak saplings. Uh, <laughs> giving them away? The damn tree. Yeah. It, was, it was somebody. You got an was, oak tree for free? We did. Thanks, Dad, for the oak tree. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but it was, no, and yeah, but of course, obviously, they weren't able to do it. But, but I think, was it April? It's April that they're doing it? Yeah, they, they're doing it in April this year. They are doing it. Which is oh, a complete great. switch. Because honestly, I, I feel like I do better in the spring than I do in the fall for some reason. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. But, as far um, as just sales? Just sales. Yeah. It's probably because of what I paint. I paint in giant Technicolor, like, scenes and yeah. you know things that make you go oh wow well, i'm gonna phase out and of reality on that for a while so yeah, yeah I, more I, springy. Think I just i think the colors your stuff is yeah. more springy well and i, I did want to make sure that we talked about your art uh, oh, la- yeah. last uh time no, we, we sat down we we didn't get to talk about the art very much no, that's because I, I talk that's, a lot that's <laughs> because that's because i wanted to give matt a chance to talk about his music well we gotta make sure we talk about both of you guys because <laughs> y'all yeah, both create amazing, amazing works of art it, so. well and yeah and she um has been making a lot of inroads lately with doing things like murals what do you got three on the on the well uh two of those are unofficial but they're like you know they're they're deep touch inquiries like they came in they tickled me and they're like hey what are you doing (laughs) right right uh, it's it's like i gotta do the follow-up on those but there's it's a process like you gotta get the design the proposal talk with the owner talk with the city get it all lined up Make sure everybody likes the artwork, and then you got the mural. But um, but she, you know, there are a lot of places that are interested in in it. Yeah, yeah. and I think the um, the thing that I'm proud of her for doing is is just going out and seeking those opportunities. Yeah. Sticking uh, my well, foot make through. sure you do that follow up sure. stuff because we were talking about this at the uh, singer songwriter thing. But yeah. you you'd mentioned how artists can be kind of flaky. Oh yeah, okay. I know well, you're yeah. you're not. But no, she just up. just I, I think I think the reason why for that I think there's a reason and it's not because they smoke weed. That's not why. Um, <laughs> Although might it be might, one reason. might I be one. one yeah, yeah. I mean I. I do, but I don't give a shit. I mean, I'm, I'm still going to go and follow up. But um, I think the reason why that is, is because a lot of artists use art as a way to treat their um, their ADHD, their ADD, their uh, bipolar, whatever. They use it as a way to kind of get the things that are in their head out. And so they get lost in what they're doing. Yeah. So when they, if someone's like, hey, I've got a commission, they'll be like, oh, that's cool. And then just keep doing the thing they're doing. And right. it's like, oh, wait, no, I've shit, I've got a commission, you know? So yeah. I uh, think, honestly, the worst thing that you can do is overthink it when you're in yeah, you can't overthink every it. stage of creativity um because a lot of people will sit there and place judgments so like my brother used to draw right he was really freaking good like he did graphite drawings that would make your jaw drop like just incredible he'd draw like cats sharks people you know musicians he liked you know things like that and i always thought he was just amazing well one day he goes no this is not as good as it could be no this is not as good as it could be and he was placing judgments on himself Right. And so one day he just kind of quit. Oh no! Yeah, and I was like, "Why?" You know, being his sister, what? 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 Why? And because he would just always beat himself up. And you can't do that when you're just making things. What's your learning. brother's name? Casey. Casey. Is Casey listening to this? Uh, he will. <laughs> Casey, get back after it, man. What are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? Let, bro? Let's see some of this art. Exactly. Stop it's placing good. judgment on yourself. Good totally. Too. Totally. And he he also did that with music for a while. He's like, nah, it's not as good as it could be. But but here's the thing. So, uh, God, and I'm, I'm sorry if I'm just throwing quotes out all over the place. No, that's uh, good. We like these. Do. You've had some good ones. You haven't had a bad quote yet. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. Uh, he, he, that's he why wins. you're my meme lord on Facebook. <laughs> I am the me- I am a meme lord, Mama. Uh, yeah. Uh, you they, make it, making Duleen proud. Sorry, go ahead. I'm trying to remember what I was about to say. Oh, shit. No, it's okay. Uh, it's my fault. No, no. What were we talking about? We were talking about um, when you were creating, and, and this is not an exact quote, but uh, it's the sentiment. When you're creating something and you're finding all of the things that are wrong with it and you're like, no, this is not good. You can guarantee there is somebody out there doing it worse than you, more proudly, <laughs> and getting it out there in the world 
and and oh. you and if you could just put aside that judgment that you have of every little thing that you're doing you could actually have it out there and uh be beating that guy that is doing it crappy but yeah. the, the difference between you and him is that he's not thinking it to death he's just going wow that's pretty good i'm gonna put it out you know and you're sitting there going in and in and in and in messing with all the little things <laughs> i have friends that i've worked with for many many years who are fantastic songwriters that have never released anything Damn. Uh, wow. because they just can't let it go they're just like but it's not perfect yet and i'm just like it's never gonna be perfect yeah you're not trying to go for perfect you're trying to go for good all the best ideas are in the graveyard Mm. Hmm. meaning there are a lot of really 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 good oh, yeah. ideas that never no that they never came to fruition the day. and what you have too and and I've, I've had friends like this as well who are the idea guys and they come with just every day idea 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 and the thing that's missing is okay grab the idea now let's work on it and let's get it to a point yeah. where you can get it out i am I'm, I'm very much a fan of um kind of test audiences mm -hmm. um so when i'll write a song i'll second life's my preferred place to do it is to just go i'm just going to play this and i'm going to see what you guys think and i always announce it if I, you, I just just real quick you've brought second life up a yeah. few times mm -hmm. where is that so it is a virtual world um it is it's, oh. yeah you have little <laughs> you have little cartoon avatars how do and, i get there and it's secondlife.com <laughs> Just download it and it's it can be a freaky place but just enjoy yeah it. yeah <laughs> i am told pretty authoritatively that most of the people are in there to have uh, uh cyber sex okay uh, right that's not why i'm in there because yeah. why <laughs> he's but, in there like once a week but like i'm in there because there are people playing gigs and and i'm one of the people playing but the cool thing about it is so real quick yeah are you playing gigs and somebody else might be using it for something else? I mean, you just mentioned. Oh that. no, yeah, okay. no people are fucking to this thing. You oh. know, I, I'm not, I'm not. So I had I had a house in Second Life for a while, oh. and and the neighbor had a tentacle machine, uh, and we won't go into <laughs> what all it did. Is fantastic. But <laughs> I know just, the, I know the so word hentai. Questions. That's a, a so yeah. anyway. I don't know why I know, but I do. Yes. <laughs> so it can be like that sometimes, but. Uh, <laughs> In fact, there's this place I play, I play in there that's a replica of the Hotel Chelsea in, in New York, and there's a there's a hotel room right above the stage, and periodically you'll hear people. Uh, okay, you know. all right, you're really gonna have to walk me through this. So, <laughs> all right, you're on your computer. Yes, you're in Second Life. Right. So my little what dude, <laughs> my little dude walks. What's going? On? He walks. So you you can they build places like you know, like I said, so let's let's start with the Hotel Chelsea. Right. It's a replica of the of the famous Chelsea Hotel. That, is this like Grand Theft Auto? Like your character yeah, moving yeah, around? Yeah. It's like yeah. a little virtual world. You yeah. You you move your dude around, and um, you know type to each other as you're standing in the same room, or if you want to, you can use voice. I don't use voice to talk to people. But uh, each place that you're in has an audio has an option to put an audio stream in uh, from whatever. So most people just run internet radio or something into there. But one of the things you can do is you can buy an audio streamer yourself and turn on your microphone at home and uh, play music. And they'll plug it into the land. And, and so uh, I, you can play a gig. And whoever is in this building can hear you singing uh, so cool. your tunes. Yeah. And I've been in there since 2006. Now, what's, oh, I read an article cool about it is that as you're playing, you're playing to people not just here, everywhere, but all they can over be the world. Right, right. Yeah. I, I have I have people who, who are in Australia listening to this mm -hmm. thing, you know, so. Um, but yeah, I, I read about it in Popular Science in 2006, and then I was home with a newborn at the time and was just kind of looking for ways to play gigs that didn't involve me leaving the house. Yeah. And uh, it was perfect for that. <laughs> uh, but what's cool about it is that because you don't know who you're in there with, sometimes you can be in there with some very interesting people. Uh, there was a woman who kept coming to my shows, uh, it was about 10 years ago, and finally, after the show, was like, hey, um, if you come up to Memphis, I can get you into Sun Studio to do some some tracks. It's like cool, and and then she said, "But I have something to tell you. I'm not actually a woman because uh, <laughs> you know, it's a little, you know, avatar." And so um, I ended up going up to Memphis. <laughs> ended up going up to Memphis, doing a track at Sun Studio, 
and as part of going up there Bert uh, walks up I was it <laughs> well right you know <laughs> but it but but in actually been being a ended up being a really good friend of mine but um also got me into ardent studio which is where they made led zeppelin three and like all the early zz nice. top records i got to uh john hampton to produce my records he's done like uh gin blossoms and now, how, how did that's you incredible john hampton again how, huh? did you, how did you meet so john oh now, so this was funny so so we got <laughs> so we were up there we we're up at ardent just making a record and i'm walking through the hallway and this old guy i bump into this old guy and he goes I heard you guys are from Dallas. I said, well, we're from Fort Worth. You know, same general area. He goes, do you know, do you know Reggie Roofer? And I had Reggie Roofer. He's a violin player who had played on my first two records. I was like, yeah, I know Reggie Roofer. And he goes, man, I produced his, his uh, first album out here. And, uh, you know, uh, Spot was a band that he had at the time. And I didn't know who this guy was, you know, and I was talking to him. And we talked for, about Reggie and all this other stuff. And then he goes, well, you know what? You need to come make a record up here uh, with me sometime. I was like, okay, sure. And I walked back in the studio. I talked to Adam, who was the engineer we were working with. I was like, I talked to this guy in the hallway. He says, dude, that was John Hampton. Like, he's he's got Grammys and gold records. And I'll, like, you know, <laughs> like, he just engineered this Jack White record, you know. And so I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, shit. And I own several albums that i like that were produced by this man and That's and awesome. so uh we set up so my um friend jason died uh and he had left behind a bunch of uh, one of those guys that left a bunch of songs that he had never recorded never put out and uh now he couldn't do it so what i did was i assembled the band and a bunch of vocalists to do a tribute album of tunes of his and i was like I'm going to call John Hampton and we're going to make a tribute record with John Hampton. And because that would really piss Jason off, you know, uh, <laughs> that he didn't get to do this. Uh, so <clears throat> anyway, we went and did it and uh, it was a really cool experience. And sadly, after right after we finished mixing the thing, John Hampton died. He, he, he oh, was, uh, he was sick with a, I, I couldn't tell, I couldn't tell that he was sick, but uh, like a two months after that, we were, we were the last album that he finished damn um and wow. uh, so a tribute album for a guy who had passed right. produced by a guy who passed shortly thereafter and uh, so it was kind of a heavy uh that was a heavy experience especially to do it in that place what's the name of that album uh safely down the songs of jason jackson i'll send you a link send me a link um, let me put it in the show notes yeah. and uh if because it's it's a good record and it's got a lot of good guests on it now if somebody's Very good. If, if somebody's just listening and doesn't want to look at the show notes where do they find it if you go to uh jason jackson dot bandcamp dot com okay. um it's on there or if you just look up the songs of jason jackson on any of your music portal thingies because i haven't seen that i want to hear it yeah it's it was something well we put it out i I'm at the point now where I've put stuff out and and I forget that it's been a while. So right. this was in 2014 when we put this out. And at the time, we did get some write-ups in the Startlegram and the Weekly and whatnot. But, um, you know, it's, it's been a while. It's You're right. Like yeah. eight years. You've moved on to other things. Well, I have. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's the thing that I do is I'm like, okay, that was cool. Now I'm going to go write a novel, you know. Um, <laughs> and we're, speaking of which, right now what I'm doing is a am doing a radio play version of my first novel, uh, okay. Rewired because how are you going to put it out i'm going to do it uh serially digitally so there's 26 episodes going to release one a week for 26 weeks awesome and um i want to do it old radio style like like so like the shadow and like um i grew up i grew up listening to these old radio shows from 30s and 40s and i like the aesthetic and so i'm like i could do that with like this that's so cool story man. I already wrote, you know <laughs> and i know all of the and i i proved something that i wasn't sure people had theorized who was it? i think it was goldblum Gold, jeff goldblum yeah. was saying that uh he said really most musicians secretly want to be actors and most actors secretly want to be musicians Deep. that's and, fact that you know, know i i know for a fact <laughs> most actors want to be musicians yeah. and so 
uh, I tested that theory, and so I contacted my musician friends. I was like, hey, do you want to do some voice acting? They're like, hell yes, I want to do some Absolutely. voice acting. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's like, oh, he's right. So you're, you're going to play out the novel. Uh, yeah. You're, you're oh, going to yeah. have actors in Absolutely. it. Absolutely. That's and I, very and cool. And I have assembled Fort Worth's finest. I got Keegan McEnroe. I got uh, freaking Stephen Prigmore. Uh, you know, a lot, a lot of really good Well, if you ever find yourself needing a village idiot, hit me Which up. Which is, I still have some parts open. <laughs> I, I have a teeny weeny part. Do you? Mm. A little bitty one. <laughs> what, do you, what, what part do you play? Uh, I play the uh, chick who sneaks the main character out of the psych ward. Hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's an important <laughs> role. I like, I like it's that. Very important role. I like that. I get yeah. to utilize my own personal sarcasm and it makes me happy. <laughs> Still nefarious. It's awesome. But yeah, no, I you know, love that. That's what, I, that's what I think is cool is like, there's so many people around here who just, God, they get, they're just oozing all this talent and, and it seems a shame to me that so many of them are like, uh, you know, uh, bartending. Or <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, talented people who are bartending, if you want to come I mean, paint walls with me and get another thing right? on your resume, come or, on out. You can yeah. help with this mural. But you know what really drives me insane is you look at local musicians that just, that they didn't get the spotlight they deserved yeah. based on their talent. I, you see a lot of that. Oh, yeah. You're one of those people. Well, I appreciate that. And, and you, you do well in your own uh, do what I can. environment, I'm sure, mm-hmm. but... You, you, you ought to be playing big gigs. But you know what the thing about it is? This is that, so I, um, there are levels to these things. So like you got your Billie Eilish and one, you get the people who are, but then there is also a music middle class, right? There's people who tour and they play gigs and they, and they do okay, but they're not household names necessarily. Right. Like you'll catch them at, at like the Kessler or, uh, you know. Lately at Tulips. Right, or tulips, right. Tulips. People who you like, like, what is it? Mike and the Moon Pies, right? Mm-hmm. They played there. Yeah. Packed. Yeah. Packed tulips out. You don't hear Mike and the Moon Pies on Kiss FM, right? You know, like, that's right. not, you know. So there are, there is a music middle class that I'm still trying to ooch my way up into. Right. And, and Joe is one of those guys that's kind of doing that too, where it's like, okay, to wriggle your I'm way. not a household name. But I'm making a living, and I'm making right. it work. Right, and, and that, that's and that's the goal, right? That's ultimately, yeah. is where I want to get, and and I'm doing okay. I mean, I, this past couple of years, honestly, um, being able to play gigs has helped me through all of this morass that we're in, yeah. both emotionally and financially. So it's been good for you. It's been good for me. Yeah. Um, and from learning how to do sideman stuff like I do for Joe, right? You know, so um, when I'm playing gigs with him, I'm, I'm playing bass or I'm playing lead or whatever. And then I'll go and do a Matthew show gig where I'm like the singer. And then maybe I'll go, you know, guest on somebody else's thing. And what it, it does two things. One, it kind of gets you out in the community a bit, but it also helps to kind of keep that ego in check, right? Right. So you're like, yeah, okay tonight i'm the main guy on the mic but tomorrow night i'm the guy playing bass in the back you know and that's fine and both yeah. of those are extremely necessary is the video not gonna do i did it blow up? i can try oh, no. I, I i'm not even it. sure it got don't the first half of that I we need about. better video equipment oh well I, mean, just... I wouldn't worry about it nah. no i'm not worried about it all right so uh do you have a preference on the uh mic level Oh, I mean, whatever, whatever makes it. Uh, I mean, I'll crank it all the way up. So yeah, just as long as I'm not going to fry it. Yeah, if it overpowers your voice, I'll turn it down. My voice is is less likely. To hurt. She's a little louder than I am, but um, okay, it'll be. It'll, I'll, I'll from, watch from the over levels. there. It'll be fine. And when I run it through the filters, it'll all be same same anyway. Same same. So we're gonna do the uh, poop tune first, right? Are we? No, I was just gonna. Do I don't want to oh. do two songs. Oh, shit. Okay. That's why I was warming up the... the um, okay, yeah. If that's okay? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Okay. I was just checking. Yeah. So do, do we want to intro... Do we want to intro this? Tell everybody about what you're playing. Okay. So, uh, during the break, we had a discussion, <laughs> and uh, we said, hey, uh, got this musician on this show. He hasn't sang a damn thing uh, the whole time, so maybe you might want to hear what the heck we sound like. Uh, this is a tune that... Uh, I helped my friend Jeffrey Sims and my other friend Mike Montgomery finish a few years ago, and it's partially bait. We so we grew up in Weatherford, Texas, and uh, periodically go back to visit, and uh, so, so, somewhat about that. Excellent. <clears throat> it's called Little Town. Let's do it. This 
little town again The house looks the same Seems nothing has changed at all Except our reasons for being here Today and the light will guide our way. And the light will guide our way. Down again, no audits of fame. Same face in the sandwich shop, same face in the workshop window pane. In '94, it was all so hard. We pushed on the walls till they all fell apart Now it's all these years in the open air I'm looking for their traces My God, that's a great <laughs> duo. I like it. Yeah, originally... Have y'all been playing that for a while? A mm, couple years now. Uh, the original Damn. studio version, I had my friend Amy singing the vocals on it, and uh, when we were talking about it, and I forget who had the idea, one of us had the idea of like, hey, why don't, why don't you was, sing I think that? it was your idea, I think actually. I the idea. Because I was like, I don't ever play that song because I don't have Amy here. She lives in LA. I don't right. have Amy here to sing it. It's like, well, why don't you sing it? So she sang it and now beautifully. I, I My God, she did thank good. you. <laughs> God, thank y'all for doing that. That's yeah. it's always such a huge moment for me whenever I get somebody to actually play here in, in the studio. You should the you, studio. I like. It. I don't. I don't know why you don't have to do, do it more often. You know. I'm so. trying. I'm, I'm. I'm trying to get artists to to, to bring. Most their honestly, most musicians. Them. If you tell them to play something, they will absolutely play it for you. You talk about my like my social media feed, right? Okay. Oh God, my meme lord. Yes, but <laughs> you have no idea 
the sorts of things I do not post. No, no, no. You need to post them. <laughs> no. Yes, no, sir. No, I really don't. Send them to me. That third, Just send them to that me. That third question? I'll never tell anybody. That's the important question. <laughs> yes. No, I, I've, I've made entire screeds and posts, and, and I've, I've said... I'm going to sit on this. I've done Sleep that. on it. I've done that too. And then I wake up the next day and I go, nope, that's going yeah. in the trash. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and no, that, that's wisdom. And mo- yes, it is. <laughs> because there was a time that that editing did it not would, happen. It would have gone out first and draft. I yeah. Have, yeah. And I've faced consequences for that type of thing. So, no. So, and also, look, I'm a dude that plays guitar and, you know, like, my opinion is not the most important thing in the world. Well, it's um, important to me. Well, I'm glad that it's important, it's important to me. Just what were you trying to say? I was going to say, so touching base on the subject of racism, I got an interesting little window into that, um, just going and doing yoga with a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. So my friend Choke, she's a Fort Worth artist. She was hosting these big yoga sessions. And there were a couple things that happened during the black lives matter protests and it was just shortly after there were some individuals who got killed i what, was had it, was the, this in fort worth or no 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 this was this is not in fort worth this nationwide was like nationwide okay right shit and i don't want to i don't want to like lambast or get into that because honestly i can't remember the names presently because right. i don't know we've been talking a while yeah but um <laughs> what people do not see is how one death in the black community affects the entire black community. One thing people do not see is how one comment that goes against that community affects the entirety. Like, even if it wasn't them, that pain is like really, really visible. And I feel like I get that now. Uh, A friend of mine really broke it down for me. Um, And what, what he explained to me is it's not just... It, it it still is a minority. The African American mm-hmm. population yeah. is thirteen percent, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere in that range. And whenever you see something like that on television mm-hmm. and social media, whatever, you gotta explain that to your kids. It's like right. why why you, is you that get, person who looks like me getting gunned down? You in get, that you shot? gotta explain to having, your yeah. to you your know. child. So you're well why why you need to yeah. be extra polite to the police yeah. officer. Yeah. Why right, you right, need right. to make sure your hands are on the top of the steering wheel. Mm-hmm. I got know, there, there's a lot that goes into that. Yeah, I got so, into it with a guy because I was telling him you know, another white another white guy, you know. I was like, Man, have you ever been pulled over and th- and thought oh my god this is my last day on this, this planet might, this might yeah. be it for me yeah like, that's never happened to me and in most yeah. cases hopefully it's not true right. right but you know what it crosses your mind yeah it doesn't cross mine it doesn't cross my mind no. and i don't have to deal with that no. and whenever somebody inside the black community experiences that mm-hmm. they lose a family member they lose exactly. a friend they lose a loved one and it just seems unfair it, to me knowing the people that i know it impacts every yeah. one of them yeah. yeah yeah because now you have to explain to your children that now you you as an individual right, right have to decide you know how am i going to process this information mm-hmm. yeah i get yeah. That. it doesn't it doesn't affect I get that me now. so much but i've seen how it affects that group of people and it's like oh my god i am so sorry that you're going through this yeah. and 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 for the people that truly don't get it mm-hmm. i understand them too because i was brought up in a very As well, uh, yeah. diverse high school mm-hmm. and Same. i never saw any of this right. i had a diver- diverse group of friends i just i did not know that racism on that level was sure. still what and it is so, today yeah. i thought that was something yeah. from the we, past we thought it was you know buried a done deal right yeah, yeah. no so. i thought it was because so those clan rallies that i saw when i was in college uh, when i came back a few years later they had stopped them and so i thought oh okay, we're, we're making we're progress done. yeah <laughs> nope <laughs> you know, it turns out yeah. that we're not it just changes it changes what it looks like mm-hmm. uh and that's the thing to keep in which is again history rhyming rather than repeating yeah. so we're not going to get guys in white hoods walking around Mm-mm. we're gonna get guys with ak-47s pointing them at, pe- at protesters who are just peacefully protesting yeah, without so, a weapon we- on so their weatherford weatherford there was a yeah. 
BLM thing on, on the courthouse there. Or and there was the a guy that I went to truck. school with who was posted up in his truck, you know, aiming, not firing. <laughs> and uh, th- like, he got in trouble. Not cute. But <laughs> it ain't cool, man. No. You know? no, no, not good. And you ought to know better. Because yeah. we went to the same high school and, you know, we both learned about MLK and we both mm-hmm. learned, like, we know the history. You've just decided to forget it. And it ain't cool. And that's that's the thing that I also say about it is that I am a, I'm a white guy that grew up in, you know, in a country town. At the time, Weatherford was a country town. It's it's a bigger place now. It's still kind of country. It's a little. It's still a little country. <laughs> you can still get your country on over there. But I was raised with a lot of ideas that were wrong, and um, I came around to recognizing that they were wrong because I looked into them. And that's what you're doing, you know. And it's not your. It's not anybody's fault for being raised ignorant. It's not. It's not your fault. It is your fault if you stay. <laughs> yes, it, <laughs> you know, no, and, and and but that's so. So I don't. So when I when I talk to these kids, you know, who come out of these little towns and and because sometimes we get them at, at, at my job, you know, and um, they don't know anything. They were raised in Chrome or wherever, mm-hmm. and um, I don't. I don't get mad at them because they can't. They can't know things. Yeah. They it's, they only know what they were told. Well, and you don't have an original idea at best. At at no. best estimates until no. twenty five, no. yeah. but I can't get mad at it. You know, it's, oh my god, we got a whole nother podcast episode. Here. <laughs> but it, there, there's a, there's a lot. There's a, there's a shit ton of intricacies here. But yeah, what people wrong. need to know, I think, is that however you're feeling about the situation, yeah. you're not alone. No, everybody's yeah. in this, yeah. and the media has swung it to be very polarized. Well, it can be but, because but, there's ratings. But, but the issue is not polarized. No, we're all a family. Right. Yeah. We're all Texans. We're yeah. all Fort Fort Worthians. Yeah. Worthians. We're all Americans, yeah. and we're all humans uh, right. cruising around on a dirt ball going through space <laughs> dirt yeah. ball convertible spaceship <laughs> if they turn and up. we we're in this together and we need to find a way to make sure that everybody yeah. feels included and that whenever somebody anybody of any creed color or race gets pulled over by a, a member of our government mm-hmm. our our enforcing agents our police officers right we need to find a way to make sure that that doesn't feel like a dangerous event yes right you know yeah. that that's not okay no it's not okay and you should be able to sit in your home and watch television yeah without fear of being shot by a police officer yeah, yes, right. you should. and ending statement on that or open your own front door and feel yeah, comfortable right. enough yeah. to we, do we, so we also at the same time need to make sure that the men and women that put their lives on the line mm-hmm. To make sure that we're safe, do not feel excluded in this sure. because there are shitty people that make shitty decisions, of course, and it doesn't make it okay. No, but also those people are very intricate to our survival yeah. as a society. Of course, absolutely, we need to make sure that we've got and these the thing law about enforcement it. officers, and we need to support them. But we need to also hold them accountable for but their bullshit. So, uh, yeah, the, the, I'm trying to think of who did the quote, but you know. If you Spider, really Spider Man, probably with, it was probably but with great, great responsibility, responsibility. Comes, it was very yeah. power. With great power it comes great responsibility. Thank <laughs> <Yes>. you. <laughs> but it's also about the standards that we hold people to, mm-hmm. uh, and so uh, you know, just as a as a private citizen, I hold myself responsible for not being a. a guy that knocks over liquor stores or what like you know i'm I'm trying to make myself a productive member of society uh i also hold the people who are doing their job whether it be police fire department whatever that's the standard i hold them to it's like are you being a productive member of society are you being a destructive member of society for sure and uh that holds for everybody if you're a garbage man you know, are you are you knocking over all the cans and not taking the <laughs> stop knocking over my can garbage, dude? <laughs> Don't be a bastard. I love you, guy. but knock it off, you fucker. <laughs> you can put the cans down neatly. I know your you're machine. in a hurry. You got lots of cans to like dispose of, but right. just stop knocking it over. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, 
No, I yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah, I'm absolutely. With I'm with you. you Got to yeah. make sure that everybody is held to the same level of accountability. And and I think too what that does when when we all choose to be and are and are pressured to be the best versions of ourselves, whatever ourselves are, I think it raises all the boats. When Hell I yeah. so if I'm in a that's jo- a great way to put it. If I'm in a job situation and everybody around me is phoning it in there is a pretty strong uh, instinct in my brain to go, well, why am I working hard then? If everybody around me is phoning it in, why don't I just phone it in too? Uh, like put it in neutral? Yeah, just kind of, eh, you know, coast it. Just get the check. So when I said earlier that if you're the, like if you're the, be- you're the best player in the room, you're in the wrong room, right? If you are the only person in the room who's given a damn, uh, you need to find people who give a damn more than you do so that you can be motivated to yeah. give to give more dams uh and that if to use a plumbing metaphor <laughs> water finds its own level okay right? okay i didn't know how bad that was gonna get. <laughs> <laughs> he was like uh <laughs> so if you got a turd stuck in the no um no water finds its own level so the the higher and maybe this is pie in the sky shit that I have, but and, and but it's the thought that I have as a father is that I try to show, not tell, uh, the way that I want my life to be judged it's and the way, best way to teach. And so, what I hope, and of course, you don't know until the kid goes into therapy at thirty, but <laughs> but um, <laughs> what, what I hope I'm getting across to the kid is you know give a damn you know yeah. about what you're doing and yeah. who you're doing it with and uh how much you care about people because you know that there are people out there who are providing the opposite example to their children right now yeah. and what's going to happen is my kid and that other person's kid are going to meet each other have a in conversation the world and the water's going to find its level right there you go. and what you want to hope is that there are enough people whose water level is here that maybe they kind of bring the other people up right yep. there. And the lower the overall level goes, yeah, I can go on with the plumbing <laughs> metaphor for a long time, even <laughs> though did I did not attempt the pipe. I did not, uh, do you know, you live from next to the plumbing training center over here, this pipe trades. On, oh on yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Every plumber in Fort Worth has been through there. At one are you point serious? Oh yeah. It's, it's, it's where you take your test. Okay. So, anyway, so you know that. <laughs> well, I'm glad I do. Matthew, thank what? you so How much, you man. Just Just a, Tony. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, okay, I forgot that Tony did that. Jesus. Y'all are pillars of this community. I, thank you so you much. Know what? So are you. And, and, and I am so psyched that this thing is still on. Uh, oh, it will continue After to be all on. of that, because yeah. like... I, you know, I've been around a while, and like I've gone on to podcasts that were the the new podcast, and then like six months later, it's gone. Right? Right. Uh, this has not done that. You've yeah. stuck with it, and you've you've made it a good thing, and you should keep doing. Man, it. Man, thank you very much. <laughs> well, it will continue to be here. I promise you that. Absolutely. When you started this thing, you said something. You said, "I keep getting called to do this. Follow that always. Yeah. Don't stop following. That. I want to do this. <laughs> this is this is not." a necessity Mm -hmm. it's not a there's no other box to put it in i just want to do this and do it conversations like this thank y'all so much for being (laughs) here absolutely four worth roots thank y'all for listening and we will see you next week thank you for peace yay doing the music you got the music A huge thank you to Trista and Matthew for being back on Fort Worth Roots. It's always uh, a huge compliment anytime somebody comes back on the show. Because, you know, the first time they might have walked away from it going, oh, you know, I shouldn't have done that. That was stupid. (laughs) But they came back. So, obviously, they thought enough of uh, Fort Worth Roots to to be back on the show. And we got them to play for us again here in the the home studio. So, uh, Matthew, Trista... Thank you, thank you, thank you. I am looking forward to running into you guys at more of these events. I've actually been seeing Matthew and Trista at a lot of events lately. Um, they're very active. They they play all the time at a different venue. That I, I think he plays every day. I don't know that for sure, but 
It, it seems like it. Um, but yeah, go to the Matthew Show uh, to to see that lineup and make sure you check out Art of Trista Studios. Uh, as a as an artist, Trista's done a lot of work lately, kind of cultivating her skill and 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 working towards being a, a full time artist. Uh, what am I trying to say? I don't know. You just need to check it out. And uh, if you're in the River Oaks area, or if you're ever traveling through there, for those of you don't, that don't know, River Oaks is over there by the uh, Fort Worth military base that JRB, Carswell. Um, anyway, River Oaks, and there's a place called Boulevard Brew, and she was commissioned to make a mural, on uh, to paint a beautiful mural on the side of this building, and uh, she's still working on it. It's huge, but awesome. And she's branching out and trying new things. And uh, we're just very proud to, to know Trista and to uh, get to watch her grow as an artist. So make sure you check that out, artoftristastudios.com. And of course, they've got Facebook pages and stuff, but the, the websites are more complete. And got all the good stuff on there. So notes. Check out the show notes. There was too much that we talked about uh, that you need to get into the show notes for I, I just need to make sure I don't screw any of this up it's going to take me time to put these show notes together that's the last step after I do the intro outro and put everything together and run the recording through all the audacity filters and whatnot the last thing I do is the show notes and that is going to take forever because we talked about so much stuff James Webb Telescope if you haven't checked this out listen i we're gonna start getting pictures from this thing any day and uh you've heard me bring it up at least three times now on the show if you've been listening it is incredible and that's why me and matthew were nerding out on that for like a solid 20 minutes talking about this thing because it it, as humans on a dirt covered convertible spaceship careening through the universe this is one of the most incredible things that we've ever done as a species anyway it's called the James Webb Space Telescope. The JWST is what most people uh, refer to it as. But it's really cool shit. And it would be amazing if we could... Maybe we could get some engineers from, from the uh, the project on the show. I can't think of anything cooler. It'd be pretty sweet. Anyway, Fort Worth Roots. I, I know the, for those of you that are paying attention to this kind of thing, I have started talking about the description of the show at the beginning of the episode and i've redefined it a little bit uh since the very inception of fort worth roots i've told everybody i have repeated it at uh, to the point of nauseam uh i don't want this show to be boxed in i want it to be broad i want everybody to listen but i need to make sure that whenever people are flipping through looking for a podcast that i have a concise and clear message inside that description they understand that oh okay that's what this is i can't just go we have people on that talk about stuff and they're from everywhere (laughs) i can't do that it's got to be more concise so that's what i'm doing i'm trying to narrow it down and make it uh, more exact and uh, just really paying attention to what we put into fort worth roots to make sure that it makes sense you know Uh, there's got to be a little bit of professionalism in here I guess. I don't know. In the back end work, uh, there's never any professionalism in these outros. That's for sure. But that that's for me. The, out, the outro's for me. I just I talk whatever I want, say whatever I want, and uh, you, you can hang up the line if you want. You don't have to listen. <laughs> um, but I... I, I, whenever we do the recordings, whenever I do the intros, uh, throughout the entire process, I try to make sure that I, I keep my bullshit to a minimum. I try not to talk too much, but uh, the outro, that's for me. Once again, that is artoftristastudio.com. Let me make sure I got that right. Yep, artoftristastudios.com. And the Matthew Show, the Matthew Show.com. Yep. Yeah, uh, so after this uh, recording that we did with with Trista and Matthew, I went and I uh, checked out this Second Life thing, and it is just de- as debaucherous as he made it out to sound. There's just some really weird shit, and I have stumbled into some very awful conversations with some of these Pixel people, and then I just walk right out. But um, yeah, it's, it's basically, if you've played any video games over the last 20 years, it's like uh, Grand Theft Auto and... Uh, it's like Grand, Grand Theft Auto graphics from like the third Grand Theft Auto. 
and it's just an open world environment and people are just in here doing stuff i don't understand it i've, I've logged in three times but i did find uh that you can you can Go to your menu options, and you can click on destinations, and you can look up these places. So finding the dirty grind uh, should not be an issue. And now I think I've got uh, Matthew's handle here. It says, I am instant message Matthew Peril. Perilet. Peril? I don't know what the hell that says. P-E-R-R-E-A-U-L-T. Uh, and he'll teleport you to the venue. Yeah. He's been playing at uh, Main at Southside. He's been playing at the Woodshed. We caught him at the Woodshed the other day. Uh, just incredibly active. These are great people. And if I thought anybody would listen to it, I could have put up the f- entire four-hour uh, recording because it wasn't it wasn't like we just sat there and stared at each other. We literally had a four-hour conversation. <laughs> And uh, it was 1.15, 1.30 in the morning when they walked out of here. It was crazy. N- none of us knew that we had done this to ourselves. So we were just exhausted at the end of this. But worth it. And I can't wait to have him back on the show again. Uh, that's really going to be something to look forward to. And I'm just going to continue to watch these two uh, incredibly creative people as they grow. Uh, Trista's art has just gotten so awesome. And she's diving into new projects and areas that she hasn't touched before, like these murals and things like that. So awesome. I'm just glad that I'm running into these people and getting to to, to know them and, and meet people like this uh, inside the artistic community. Um Hadn't started the show. If I had not started the podcast, I would have never met these people, and uh, I, I can't imagine that now having met so many awesome people through the podcast. I'm so glad I did this. I hope y'all are enjoying this uh, as much as I am enjoying just creating it. I am always looking for feedback, so if you've got any pointers or you know, hey, stop doing this, or hey, you should do more of this, absolutely. Even if I think you're dead ass wrong, I'd still love some input. Uh, you know the deal. Media at Fort Worth Roots dot com. That's my email. Half of you have my phone number anyway. <laughs> hey, in uh, April, I don't know if I've brought this up yet. I think I did. I know I did. Yeah, with uh, with Darren from uh, episode what was that fifty nine? Uh, I believe the Mayor Pro Tim of uh, River Oaks. We talk about the car show that's coming up. That's going to be the first time we take Fort Worth Roots to an event. Really looking forward to this. So um, uh, it's in River Oaks, and I don't have all the information in front of me, but it's going to be like April 30th. It's on a Saturday, and uh, they're just they're going to have a ton of vendors there. Uh, whenever we talked about it last, I think he said he had 45 or 50 paying vendors already, and something like 70 uh, vendors that had committed to to come into the thing there's going to be that there's going to be the car show there's going to be uh people from i believe the ymca there giving people tours of their uh 300 acre facility back there which i didn't even know existed i knew burgers lake was back there but i didn't know there was a whole nother huge ass thing 300 acres is a lot guys it's a lot to have in the middle of the city that's big so Okay, that's enough rambling for me. Thank you all for listening. Again, Matthew, Trista, you guys are the best. Thank you all for being on the show, and let's do it again. And next time, you know that we, now that we know we can do that to ourselves, sit in a room and talk for four hours without taking a or with, without really breaking a sweat, now that we know that we can do that to each other, we need to make sure we plan the next recording to accommodate a four hour block of time for sure. I'll bring our hors d'oeuvres. Yeah. Or something. We'll just we'll be more prepared. Not that the last one was bad or uncomfortable, but next time we'll really gear up. I'm gonna yeah. Anyway. All right. Thank y'all for listening and I will see you next week. Bye bye.